Welcome back to the video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In our last video, we introduced the concept of Ajax, and we wrote a little Ajax code that would show you, you know, how it worked. I used jQuery for this, and it's making an Ajax call to update a random number. Now, this Ajax was done in, in here. Uh, there's our paragraph with its text and we did this using jQuery. In this video I'd like to show you how to do it without jQuery using the fetch library. Now, once again this isn't a whole lot about play other than how we put in routes you know but the routes are just like any web page it's just the data that we get back gets put into JavaScript and gets handled in some way. So for this one I want to use fetch instead. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video Fetch is kind of the newer way of handling Ajax calls in uh, JavaScript. Okay, it's it's separate from jQuery's Ajax. As part of the newer library, it returns what JavaScript calls promises, which really, really, really should be called futures. Um, and you know your syntax looks somewhat like this. Okay, I also want to step things up just a little bit. Instead of generating another random number, I, we don't have a, a data model for our application. There's not much that I could could do here. Uh, I want to have a random string that has a length that is an integer and we'll make this be an action that returns an OK of util dot random dot next string with that length. Okay, since there's a built-in next string, that made that fairly simple. Inside of our routes, we can do a get for a, let's call it random string. And actually, I will go ahead and say length there. So it'll be slash random string slash you know five or slash random string slash ten to get this as opposed to having it be a an argument that would go in. Remember if you don't put a variable in the route and it appears in the argument list over here it will become an argument in the URL so after a question mark uh, it will be a named parameter going through. Okay, controllers dot application dot random string of length which has to be in it. So the the play side is actually set up here. And in fact it's probably worth showing you the fact that you know when I do these things, let's recompile this. I didn't show this last time, but you know you have to make sure that you understand this is just a regular get. I mean, I can send my web browser directly to it and I get those random numbers. There was nothing really special about it. Random string of length 10. Yeah, one of the interesting things about random strings uh, is they're pulling from Unicode. And so the vast majority of the characters that that you get from this are interesting and not things that or it's, it's basically it's it's not like the standard um, you know, Western alphabet that's that's being pulled. You you have a lot of interesting symbols uh, and then other alphabets that that come into play here. Okay, so once again, those are just normal routes. Okay, the the key to AJAX is how you use them. So what I want to do is inside of here. I'm going to add another paragraph pretty much just like the last one. I'm just going to put the words those in there. Um, but I also want to have a length. So I'm going to also put inside of here an input of type text will have it start off with a value of five. 
And let's make sure that appears roughly the way I want in the website. <laughs> okay, that is not where my value goes. Value equals five. Okay, the idea is when I click on this, it will look up in this field for what the value is and use that number and fill in here. Okay, and once again, we're gonna do this with a fetch command instead of using the jQuery because we've already seen how to do this with jQuery. So now it's time to go over into the JavaScript. Something that I have to point out, this is kind of a foreshadowing, um, is that While I am doing this with JavaScript now, there is later on in this series, I am going to introduce uh, Scala.js. And so anything that I'm doing currently in JavaScript, I could actually do in Scala and use Scala.js to convert it over. Uh, so you know, that's a, um, a significant thing to keep in mind. Once again, you know, the goal of this, of this video series is not to introduce you to JavaScript. I do assume that you know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, if you don't know the jQuery, that's part of the reason for this video, so you don't necessarily have to learn jQuery, you can work with the standard. I often do find the jQuery to be, to be nicer to write, and I might use it some more in the Scala.js as well. Okay, anyway, so I need to get the element that I want to uh, have us click on. So that would be this paragraph here. So let's call this string text is going to be a document dot get element by ID of and I call this random string text. So that should give us that element. We can add a click handler to it that put semicolons in. Technically, JavaScript has semicolon inference. It's just not nearly as good as Scala's, and so it's considered best practice to put in your semicolons in JavaScript. So what do we want to do when this is clicked? Well, first, I want to get the value so length input equals document dot get element by ID of did I give this an ID yet? I did not. Well, let's go ahead and do that. How about length value. Okay, so I want to find that element. And then I want to do a fetch to that U to a URL that goes there. So we'll do a fetch. Our URL is going to be slash random string slash plus length input dot value. Okay. You know what? just to make sure I'm doing things correctly. Const URL equals paste console.log URL so that we can see where we're going. We'll call fetch with the URL then. And you know, we have our sample code, the then takes a function that will be applied to whatever the response is from here. Now I am going to use the lambda notation. And at least for here, we expect this response to be a string. Let's just make sure that we are getting things correctly. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and log that. So right now it's not changing anything, but I just wanna make sure that I am handling all of this properly. 
Okay. Nope. Uncaught reference. String test is not defined. There. Hmm. Oh, that's called a typo. String text, string test. Let's try that again. That's part of the reason it's nice to have the console up. So we click here, random string, five. Oh, uh, redirected false status, true, okay. There's a type basic. Since we got a status 200, uh, we have a nice response here. We just have to get the text out of it. Okay. Now here, they were doing a call to dot JSON. Uh, we aren't doing this as JSON. So So we can call dot text. Now you'll note that in that sample that this is called and then there's another then after that. Okay, and that's because the calls to JSON and to text actually don't give you back the text or the JSON themselves. They return another promise that might be waiting because these might be large bodies. And so they're they're basically breaking the work up because the way that JavaScript works, it's all inside of a single thread. And so I want to return that. And now we can do another then. This could be the response text. Console.log response text. Refresh. Hey, we got a funky string there. So the last thing we have to do is set the text on this element right here, random string. So we need to get the uh, random string equals document dot get element by ID of random string. And instead of logging this out, I want to set the text inside of random string, say maybe inner HTML equals response text. Refresh. And there we go. And if this is working, indeed, we get much longer strings if I type in a longer number. So there we go. We've seen Ajax both with jQuery and without jQuery. You can probably see why a lot of times I prefer to do jQuery, while fetch is an improvement on what, uh, what preceded it, there are many things that are still easier to do with jQuery, uh, but this gives you an idea of, of how we communicate with the server, how we update the DOM, and we need to come back and just figure out what we're gonna do now with our task list, and how we're gonna make it so that our task list actually works we're actually gonna make it a single page app. So there is one page that loads and then we communicate to and from the server just using uh, the Ajax calls from that point on and give us all the functionality that we had before.